Good morning to ya! A little spaghetti western music for you this morning. Good morning, it's DJ Wonder Chrissy, and um, today is uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, December 6th, 6, right there guys, 6. Um, going to break it up a little bit different today, we're going to going to not focus on, uh, maybe later today I'll do one on the Chicago um, update, but uh, yesterday, the director of the FBI was in front of Congress, I believe, and um, he had a very stark warning um, that I don't think we've heard until this point. And uh, his comments are about the border. So let's let's take a listen to that. All right, this is breaking this hour. Terror threats against the United States reach an all-time high since the terror attack by Hamas terrorists against Israel on October 7th. A warning now from the FBI Director Christopher Wray just a short time ago in a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing. What I would say that is unique about the environment that we're in right now in my career is that while there may have been times over the years where individual threats could have been higher here or there than where they might be right now, I've never seen a time where all the threats or so many of the threats are all elevated all at exactly the same time. That's what makes this environment that we're in now so fraught and why funding our men and women who are working shoulder to shoulder with state and local law enforcement and other partners every day makes it even more important, not less. So blinking red lights analogy about 9-11, all the lights were blinking red before 9-11. Apparently, obviously, all of us missed it. Would you say that there's multiple blinking red lights out there? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. Okay, all right. Can't say any better than that. Blinking lights everywhere he turns for trouble. A heightened level. So, I don't know if you, that's Christopher Ray, the <clears throat> director of the FBI, the head guy at the FBI, um, who's pretty much in the pocket of, um, of our current administration. And um, his comments and the way that he, gives this <clears throat> has got to cause any normal person that's got a brain to stand up and take a second look because these types of guys have been lying to us for three years now now all of a sudden they seem like they want to tell the truth um and the truth as you as we go through this video more as we unravel more and more of the truth that has been suppressed right I mean, Fox has been reporting these numbers and, and data and what's going on at the border for years now. But now all of a sudden, I'm hearing the mainstream media showing up at the border. Um, we had a, a video yesterday about Lukesville, Arizona. It's being overrun. There's like 10,000 uh, immigrants, and they're mostly uh, young uh, males that are showing up at the border. Um, and I mean, again, across the country, across the various countries of the world, we'll have some data about that. So let's return to the video and, and see, listen to their analysis just a little like bit. Like we have never seen. You have worked inside the White House, formerly with President Trump. You know what should be happening next in all of this. Give us a picture when you get that message from inside the White House. Well, one of the things I would do, the very first thing I would do, was I'd be creating a, a whole page in my binder calling the FBI director, calling all of those around him his comms team, and making sure that you communicate this to the American people. And we just heard Ray do that. But we should be hearing about this from the White House podium, because with a lot of these things, it's see something, say something. And a lone wolf terrorist can cause a lot of destruction. We saw this just before Trump took over. There was that lone wolf terrorist attack on the gay community at Pulse nightclub, 49 killed. 
50 wounded. He was an attack on the gay community. It was a terrorist attack. He was watching jihadist films. And that's what one person has the ability to do. That was the deadliest terrorist attack after 9-11 up until that point. Just underscoring one point, Kerry Kupek, former colleague of mine in the Trump administration who was at DOJ, who worked with Ray hand in hand, he is not prone to dramatic talk. In fact, the opposite. So if he is underscoring something, it is a real threat. So if he is saying this, he's seeing something. Oh, Kevin. Well, and to Kaylee's point, I think, you know, in the wake of 9-11, we, it was a wake-up call for all of us to stay vigilant, that it's, uh, American security relies on all of us to see something, say something. It's not just the 38,000 men and women that make up the FBI that can disrupt these kind of attacks or potential mm -hmm. attacks, but to, to Kaylee's point again, there were people that knew that terrorist in Florida yep. beforehand what he was doing, how he was being radicalized, and we need the Good Samaritans, the citizens of this country, to come forward and talk to law enforcement when it involves a family member or a friend that is going down this road. Because after October 7th, to your point, we're likely to see more of those copycat kind of attacks because well, they inspire people. Look, I mean, the, the head of the FBI just told us that he sees red flashing lights about those types of situations all around when asked, well, do you see one in the, you know, in the vicinity? Um, we are still watching that live on Capitol Hill. You'll see it on the left side of your screen. Our team is monitoring this. and So, so there again, <clears throat> some more in-depth analysis and... Um, this guy here, Christopher Ray, not known for dramatics. Um, so what's a person to do, right? Keep your head on a swivel as you're going out and um, doing your holiday shopping or Christmas shopping. Keep your head on, on a swivel. Don't go out by yourself, especially if you're a female. Don't go to the Target late at night by yourself. Um there's there's just a whole host of bad things that can happen folks carjackings in chicago are through the roof um you know and, and it's going to escalate to other things who know who knows what those are but you need to keep your head on a swivel wherever you are at even if you're in home depot right if you're a guy and you're in home depot be aware of your surroundings be aware of the exits that you can get out um uh, be aware of the people around you um just be vigilant. Be very, very vigilant. And um, too many, too many people are are complacent, right? After 9/11, I think people people woke up and people were a little more aware. But that's like like it's 20 some years, right? 20 20 years now. Um, there's a whole new generation. The the younger crowd, they don't care. I actually talked to my nephew last night, and he's frequenting an area of Chicago where They've been finding people floating in the river for like four or five this year. And uh, he didn't seem to be concerned at all. So um, there you have it. That's the type of attitude. That's the type of demeanor that's going to get you in trouble. And that's how things happen. Um, so let's head back uh, to Harris Faulkner and see what she's got to say. And we will go to it live uh, should the topic require that right now. And that's what we did just moments ago. We wanted to give you an update on just how dire the situation is. So, Emily, blinking you know, lights everywhere, so folks. That we can do because we don't get those national advisory reports that the president does. Right. Um, and I think what this underscores as well is that the constellation of vulnerability is quite broader than when you look at it in silos of, okay, what's happening on Sixth Avenue, what's happening on the street, uh, who might be plotting something in their garage meaning specifically that the vulnerability of the southern border and the fact that how closely that ties in with our weaknesses and our open doors is quite real. We know that in the month of October, after the terrorist attacks against Israel, we had four Iranians cover coming across the border. They're considered special interest aliens because the United States considers Iran a state sponsor of terror. Gee, we see go more figure Chinese that. Illegal immigrants flowing over the southern border this fiscal year alone than we did in the 10 years prior. And the numbers have skyrocketed from countries where we have plainly and globally stated we have suspicions about motives for coming here illegally. So when you dovetail that in with this blinking light comments by Director Ray, I can't help but hope that Congress, in lieu as well, or in light of the fact that just two months ago they said in their report, clearly there are no 
laws being enforced at the southern border that some someone will band together to protect us to cite at least to acknowledge the let me say that again there are no laws being enforced at the southern border that's kind of scary right um also she was talking about you know the fbi watch list i believe in the last three years they have caught over a hundred maybe 200 people that are on the watch list coming through the border now that's just the people that they caught right those are the stupid ones now, if you're on the watch list and you know it, I would think that you would probably take the back door, right, and not get caught. So just imagine how many of those people on the watch list that have not been caught. And I think there's some numbers coming up from various countries, the number of people that have that they've, they've uh, stopped coming across our border. And the numbers in the countries are kind of scary when you... Try to slosh it around your There's head a little bit. There's at the southern border that can create and magnify this blinking light scenario. So is there something very urgent that the president could be doing right now is my question. Because we saw earlier that number burst to 10,000 in a 24 to, to 30 hour period coming across. The Tucson sector is uh, yeah. overrun. Like they, they can't handle what they have. So because they have to process illegals coming across. So they've already broken our law. Doesn't that give the president something to work with? They're already criminals. Yeah, I mean, they, they as quickly as possible, as Emily pointed out, need to change their border policy. I mean, I, I think, you know, they're having these debates in Congress right now in the Senate uh, over border funding, Ukraine funding, Israel funding, and you really can't get the Democrats to move or change policy on it. I don't, God forbid, I, you know, you wonder if it's going to take a terrorist attack from someone coming no. over the border before they actually finally realize that their policy is incredibly dangerous to American national security. I would also remind everybody that this is not the first time the FBI director has testified to these threats. He's been saying right. this for months now, and I would encourage the FBI director to repurpose the people that are going to PTA meetings and going to Catholic church meetings and actually maybe repurpose those agents to look at American national security. Finally, we've had at least 74 attacks against American troops, plus ballistic missiles shot at U.S. Navy ships over the weekend. The attacks against the American homeland and against our troops overseas right. are, are not something that are to be talked about in the future. They are happening now. Mm. Yeah. And look, we just saw a country. We are supporting a nation of Israel that had a border attack. Right. I mean, they came across that border and they, they killed, they raped, they pillaged. So not to scare anyone, but... Um... The lady's comment about we've got we've got third world countries such as Yemen um, firing ballistic missiles at a U.S. Navy ship and sitting in the middle of the Red Sea had to defend itself. We've got drones being flown in the vicinity of a U.S. Um, U.S. naval ships. We've got we've got terrorists who have overtaken um, Israeli uh, boats or ships that had to be es are now being escorted by the U.S. Navy. Um, how does that happen, right? You've got third world countries, Yemen, where there's terrorists that are using high tech technology to go after. United States assets. I mean, that's got to that's got to scare the crap out of everyone. I, I don't mean to to raise any concern, but I just want to give you guys the facts and the figures. Okay, that's what this is. This is facts. This is figure. This is reality. You need to be aware of what's going on in the world and around you, folks. I mean, it's medieval what they yeah. have done and continue to do to hold hostages. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harry. So there you have it. There you have it. I'm, I'm um, not trying to scare anyone, but um, you know, I gotta we gotta report the news. We gotta report the news, and um, let's let's give you a little happy news to go with that, right? I talked to somebody yesterday, and he says you don't give enough happy news. Um, we know what side of the spectrum he's on, but how to protect um, your house and family. So here's a little happy news. This is the happy part of the whole thing. And let's take a look at this.
prevail. <laughs> the residents won the case. He's talking about a controversial migrant encampment. Happy, 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 happy. It's been shut down for good. Governor Pritzker making that final call today after state experts on OJB oh, environmental concerns. Casey Cronus is in Brighton Park with the latest. Officials say toxic chemicals like mercury and arsenic discovered in the soil were not addressed in ways that meet state Lovely. standards. Lovely. This bombshell development is a major setback for the Johnson administration, but for many residents, it is a win. This was known by the city of Chicago. There's institutional knowledge. Now we've learned how contaminated this is. 24 hours after Governor Pritzker paused construction on the city's first winterized tent city, the operation came to a sudden halt. It's not even safe for them. It's not safe for them. An attorney for the residents who have been warning officials about the toxic soil from the start says up until now they were blatantly ignored. That is incompetence. That is brutal ignorance. That is putting the migrants in danger. It's putting the residents in danger and when they were doing construction that was all going up into the air in reviewing a nearly 800 page report the illinois environmental protection agency Arsenic, anyone? several concerns with the city's <laughs> sampling and remediation uh, how about work. some mercury would like some mercury in response the mayor's office says the state was aware of its assessments yet didn't provide additional guidance still community members are blasting mayor brandon johnson Wasteful spending, he did this on his own, and now the... At least a half a million dollars, if not more, just... Now, the state says it is going flushed back down to the, the old toilet, folks. And will reconsider housing migrants in a shuttered CVS in Little Village. 200 beds would be available there. The governor is also working with the Archdiocese of Chicago to explore other options. It is still unclear what will happen with the city's lease on the land and all of the equipment. Meantime, the number of migrants still waiting for shelter placement now hovers around 600. Reporting in Brighton Park, Casey Cronus, Fox 32, Chicago. So there you have it. Uh, we'll give a double barrel flush to uh, Brandon Johnson as he rehuddles and tries to come up with a uh, of plan which he hasn't had for a while about time you got a plan uh brandon let's go brandon get that plan buddy and uh yeah let's uh get one of these two. Oh, maybe one more all right there you go there you go from dj wonder chrissy to brandon johnson a double barreled salute um, so there you have it, uh, the people, the people prevail there at Brighton Park, um, as Brandon retreats and, uh, huddles with Catholic charities, um, I, I suspect, I, yeah, there's no talk of putting any of these immigrants into, um, Chicago, uh, city of chicago buildings or park district buildings because there's a lawsuit and i guess it's probably got some precedent or something so uh brandon is staying away from putting any of these people into any any uh public funded places so it looks like he's got a cvs that was supposed to be an intake center now he's thinking about throwing some people in there um, as I said yesterday, there's at least four Walmarts in the bad areas of town that are empty now. And after the new year, there's going to be four more. You might want to reach out to Walmart. And there, there's actually another guy I know. Um, the, the, the former or actually the owner of Sears, Kmart. I suspect there's probably some empty Sears or Kmart stores or both on the south side of Chicago that are sitting there, and he'd be more than happy to lease, rent, or sell those properties to you, Brandon. His name is Eddie Lampert. Give Eddie Lampert a call over at uh, Sears Holdings. It's I think it's called Transform Co. now. 
he's always looking he's always looking to profit off of a a good crisis uh, i know up here in um McHenry during the pandemic he was renting out some of his his Kmart stores to uh, county entities um, around the around the United States and raking in the bucks for some properties they just had sitting there. So um, there you go, two two potential solutions for you, Brandon. From me, DJ Wonder Chris, Chrissy. If you want to consult on some more, give me a call. Look me up. Um, okay, so that's all I have for this morning. Maybe I'll come back in the evening and give you guys another another update. But um, just wanted to share that stuff with you. Like, share, and subscribe, folks. This is important. When you got the FBI guy finally fessing up to what the hell is going on and how serious things are getting and can get, uh, you gotta you got to sit up and look around and take some action. So prepare yourself for anything can happen, right? As as we've seen in the past, anything can happen. And if you live in the city of Chicago, anything is happening right now. Some people see it, some don't. So um, be careful out there. Take care of yourself. Keep your head on a swivel and don't put yourself into compromising positions. Okay, over and out, DJ Wonder Chrissy. Thank you.